remarkable about flags. A simple wooden pole with a designed fabric attached can immediately inspire within us intense feelings of camaraderie or revulsion. Friend or foe is often decided based on what's depicted in that design. While flags carry such strong associative connections for us today, their connective capabilities were clear even in the times of our ancestors in the wilderness. Ish al diglo levet avotam yachanu b'nei Israel. we read in this week's Parsha. The children of Israel shall encamp each by his division with the flagstaffs of their father's house. Tellingly, this tribal mentality is brought back into the national consciousness at the beginning of the Parsha, in which we prepare to re-engage with the world after an extended encampment at Har Sinai. Nasev and Ishma Amruka Echad were taught that while receiving revelation at the mountain, the nation was as one body with one voice, happily declaring their intent to follow God's word. Harshat Bamidbar marks a significant transition in our identity. It was relatively easy to think and act as one while living in a vacuum, removed from all outside influences. This cohesion is much harder to maintain, however, upon our re-entry into the flawed world in which we live. Parshat Bamidbar teaches that uniformity is not sustainable once we leave the mountain. If unity of thought and mind is the barometer by which we measure our success as a nation, our national project would have been declared a failure from the moment that we began to pack our bags in preparation for leaving Har Sinai. We're commanded to divide up into our camps, into the flags by which we mark our closeness to sun and our relative distance from others. The children of Israel encamped, each person according to his camp, each person according to the flag of his division. The flags marking the identity of each subset of the Israelite people, however, are not like other flags. Rashi teaches that that every division shall have its own flagpole with a colored flag hanging upon it. The color of each flag was different from those of the others. That the color of each flag corresponded to the color of that tribe's stone in the Choshen, in the high priest's breastplate. And by this means everyone would be able to recognize their own flag. Each flag was distinct, yet each was critically important. The Kohen Gadol could not enter the Kodesh HaKodeshim, the Holy of Holies, missing one stone from his Choshen. And the Mishkan could not be moved if one tribe was missing from the encampment. What enabled the Israelites to survive in the desert and eventually reach the land of Israel was their acceptance of difference within the camp a demand for unity rather than for uniformity. The flags of our Parsha represent divisions within the camp, but these flags ultimately weave together a beautiful tapestry of colors, of perspectives, which build upon and add vibrancy and beauty to the collective. Easier said than done, of course, but this is the Torah's demand. May we, we all work to see its fulfillment. Shabbat Shalom.